What's up? I'm waiting for y'all to pop on in here. Hi. <laughs> Okay, let's 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 talk. You feel me? Let's just talk real quick. Um If you can hear me and hear me well. Okay, I see the thumbs up emojis. You already know what it is. So, I'm going to get right into it, right? Cuz I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to be on here talking for a long time. I just posted a video about everything that's going on with Yay, right? posted a video talking about how it's bigger than him it's bigger than him it's bigger than all the stuff that you know people are mad about some of the stuff that he said or whatever right now mind you um now people are coming after Kyrie Irving Kyrie Irving posted a screenshot of a documentary that he watched on Amazon right he posted a screenshot of it um and like people are upset, like saying, I don't know why you would promote this is articles and stuff being written about the fact that bro watched a documentary and put it on his on his on his story. People talking about they disappointed in him and we need to have a sit down a discussion to talk about why he shouldn't watch things like that. And then you guys literally come in my comments and be like, well, we got to draw the line somewhere, blah, 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 blah. I just, I don't, I really don't understand some of the thought processes of our own people when we be, when we be so accepting of the nonsense. And I mean, total and complete nonsense. And the crazy thing is this, right? Somebody in my comments, when I was talking about like how we're watching the public lynching of black men, we always see it. When Ice Cube came out and said that he wanted to meet with the with the Republicans to see if they had anything to say uh, any plan for black people, public lynching, watched it right before our eyes. Everybody starts talking about how terrible he is just because he wants to meet with the other side and see what they have to say. You feel me? Public lynching for that. We see in a public lynching happen with Killer Mike. Killer Mike is saying, let's get something for our vote. They talk bad about him. Tariq Nasheed says, let's get something for our vote. They talk bad about him. You feel me? Kyrie Irving says, I don't want to get poked. Black people talking bad about him. And now he watched this documentary, folks talking bad about him. I said that black men have a specific thing that could happen to them, which is them dying twice. Nobody else has to worry about that because it's our men that whenever they build something, they build some sort of legacy. It's always try to destroy them even after they pass away. Look at Kobe Bryant. You feel me? Look at Kobe Bryant. He passes away and before the day is even over, is people trying to kill him a second time. It always happens to our people, to our men specifically. And instead of us peeping game and seeing what's going on, we allow the ones who oppress us to tell the, to tell us that they're oppressed, which I'll never understand. I'll never understand these two groups of people, you feel me, who think they could just come and tell us that 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 they're the most oppressed groups around. You guys know the two groups that I'm talking about. You feel me? And they come and they say different things and then tell us that they're oppressed when they're the ones who literally have the power to silence everybody. And that's what they've been doing. This is the reason why I got to get on live and speak in codes. I can't even say certain stuff because they silence people and are very good at doing so. But there's no silencing or rhetoric when it comes to negative things that are said about black people. All the music that's out that that is just degenerate nonsense, all the shows, everything that depicts us in a negative light. The LGBTQ community got the got the LGB tag removed off of that Jeffrey Dahmer thing because they didn't like how it portrayed them in a negative light. But all these shows about us being pimps and thugs and gangsters and all that, that's still in the black story section. That's still, I mean, that's an accurate representation of us, right? But then if we say the truth of the matter, which is that they're the ones who are controlling this and they're not actually oppressed, but they are the oppressors. Now, all of a sudden, it's something so wrong. It's something so wrong with saying that. It's something so wrong with us telling the truth of the matter. I'm going to tell you guys a little brief story. I went to Morocco, right? While I was in Morocco, I was, I was a part of a travel group, right? It was a black owned travel group that I was, that I was going to Morocco with. There was one white guy on the group, one white guy, you feel me? 
um, he was Jewish, one white guy that was on the trip. And we went to this coastal city called Essoera, right? We went to this city and they had Jewish quarters in the city from years and years ago when the city was built, right? From years ago when the city was built. Now, I'm in the quarters, right? We going into the desert. It's me and a whole lot of other black people. And this one white man is slathering on the sunscreen, just glossing on. Bro looks like a glazed donut. He just slathering it on and just slopping and plopping it on all over himself, right? Because he's going, he's excited to go see the land of his ancestors. So we go there, right? And I sit next to him. I said, what you doing? He was like, oh, I'm putting on sunblock. I said, you really need that, huh? And he was like, yeah, if I, if I don't have it, I'm going to I'm gonna burn. I'm going to cook. I'm going to blah, 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 blah. You feel me? And I say, and this is the land of your ancestors, huh? This is the land of your people, you say. You notice all of us black people here, we could be in the sunshine. We could be out here in the Sahara Desert where we were. And I don't need nothing out here. But this supposed to be the land of your people. Oh, okay. I just said that and I walked away from them. Why are you slathering that on? You will die out here, bruh. You will not make it. You will burn to a crisp out here. This ain't, you ain't, you ain't, you ain't indigenous to this. You ain't indigenous to nowhere if we being 100% honest. But you know, that's hate speech. They're starting to call truth hate speech. Everybody calls truth hate speech now. You can't tell the truth. You can't tell someone who's morbidly obese that they're morbidly obese and their life is going to be shorter because that's hate speech. You can't tell people that that's not your lineage. You have hijacked an ancestry that doesn't belong to you because apparently that's hate, that's hate speech. And I don't, I don't really want to hear that. You feel me? Somebody was in the comments just now talking about black people can be oppressors. Lies. Lies, lies, lies. Black people do not have the economic power. We do not have the housing. We do not have the schools. We do not have the hospitals. We do not have the, the lands. We do not have the money to be oppressing nobody. I wish you guys can get that out your head. To oppress someone, you have to be able to have an advantage over them and put them in a, in a worse position. We are not the ones. Black people, we are not the ones withholding housing, loans, jobs, health care. We're not withholding that from anybody. We don't have the power to. So any person in my comments telling the black people could be on. No, they no, we cannot. We are literally not in a position to oppress anybody, which is why we can't even stop our own people from being canceled. Our own people will say stuff that's true, stuff that's good. And we get on and start defending the oppressors against our own people that's oppressing us. I don't want to hear that. I need y'all to stop being dumb, honestly. And I'm, I'm not even trying to be mean because people all in the comments like you talking about the public lynching of a black man. What about the George Floyd and how his family feels? Let me tell you guys something, because I know we live in a world that has like totally eliminated you guys from opposite, like opposing perspectives. Has totally removed you guys from opposing perspectives because people can say that. Well, what about George Floyd's family? Let me tell you something. I don't know how his, how his family felt. I don't know how his family felt read, hearing that or reading that. But what I will say is this. There's never been any one person that I've entirely agreed with. Never. Never in life. I know because we're sitting up online and because we, we, this, the, the, all, all the, all the social medias is run by the liberals and all that other kind of stuff. So you can't really see opposing viewpoints. You be in your own echo chamber and anytime you hear something that's outside of what you're used to, you're so flabbergasted and outraged and oh my goodness, the world is ending because someone doesn't think how I think. There's never been a single person alive that has said something that I agree with a hundred percent of the time. So do I agree with everything that Ye said? No, I don't. I don't agree with everything that he said. And some of the stuff that he said, it offended black people. Okay, but we have to get out our feelings. We allow ourselves to be so emotionally manipulated that we don't see the bigger picture of things. All somebody got to do is vaguely offend us. And the left and the right sometimes will use our emotions against us to manipulate us.
to not see the bigger picture. My father, I love my father with all my heart, but he ain't, it's, I don't rocked with everything he said to me. I haven't rocked with 100% of what my own father said. So you guys expect to, to oh, if, if I don't agree with 100% of what Kanye said, you know, I don't like the part where he talked about George's Floyd family. I don't like that part. Okay, I didn't like it either. Does that mean I throw it away, throw everything away? I got friends that do stuff that I don't like. You feel me? Friends that's doing stuff that I'm, I'm not, you know, okay, I might not like this. Or they might have maneuvered away in the past. Or they either didn't communicate with me the way that I wanted to. Am I going to throw the whole person away? I like social media got y'all in a whole echo, cha echo chamber group think box to where you don't understand that you don't have to agree with people 100% to understand where they're coming from. Y'all ain't got to agree with me 100% of the time. I hope, I hope you don't. I hope that sometimes you think logically about what I say before you just decide to agree with me because I'm cute or whatever the case may be. I'm not agreeing with 100% of anything anybody says. Y'all be so ready to be in your feelings, though. Well, I didn't like the part where he said something about George Floyd. I didn't either. What are we going to do about that? I didn't like There's There's so many things that people said that I love that I didn't like. But I'm telling y'all, social media got y'all messed up. Where you live in an echo chamber, you live, you rest and reside and have set up camp and built a foundation in your echo chamber. And you don't understand what it means when someone vaguely disagrees with what you have to say or they are slightly outside of what your perspective is somebody was all mad at me talking about i don't know why you like matt walsh he doesn't like black people okay well maybe he doesn't honestly i'm not the biggest fan of all white people if we're being 100 percent real it's not like i hate white people i don't but i just prefer to be around black people so if he feel the same way if he on the same type of time i'm on then i actually understand him he want to be over there with his people cool but I do agree with what he says about a woman being an adult human female. And I will rock with you on that ground. Because I'm not buried in an echo chamber. That's all I have to say. Look at this. Kanye don't care about us. He only cares now because what he's going through. I don't care. This is what I'm talking about. We're so emotional. Kanye don't even know you to say that he care about you. It's not about Kanye. That's what I'm, this is the point that I'm trying to get y'all to understand. It's not about, we got to rally behind and defend Kanye. The point I'm trying to get y'all to understand is that it's not okay to allow our oppressors to tell us how and what to think under the guise of, we're trying to protect people from hate speech. All this stuff that's going on right now is how we get to a totalitarian dystopian world. You feel me? This is how we get there. And I'm not with that. I'm not with the nonsense. I'm not with us getting to a point where niggas get arrested and never seen or heard from again because they said something that you didn't like. Because there's other countries that are like that. There's literally, there was literally a rock climber, I think from Iran or something. And she did her rock climbing competition without her, um, without her head covering. Her country came and got her early and no one has seen her since. She's just gone. People are praying for her, hoping that she's okay. But nobody know where she at. You know what I'm saying? And we will quickly get to this point where if I'm talking like this, the next day or later on the night, they will get me and y'all never hear from me again. And you guys are applauding this. You guys are saying, yeah, this is the society that we want. And not understanding that it's bigger than yay. That's what I said. It don't matter about he don't care about us or eh, I don't like what he said. What matters is the fact that we should be able to say things and have perspectives and tell the truth without our own people praising our public lynchings. This is what I'm saying. We don't know what's going to happen with that girl. She tried to do a, a, take a stance or whatever. She thought maybe because she was in another country that they wouldn't get her. They came and got her. And no one has seen her since. You know, but, you know, I guess this is what you guys want. Because, because our, our own people are so enamored with proximity to whiteness, we don't really want something for ourselves. We don't really want to just live and, and flourish and build each other. Because that's the only reason why I could think of. That's the, that's the only thing I could think of as to why we as black people go so hard against our own. 
because we're looking for approval from white people because we genuinely desire it. No matter how pro-black a lot of these niggas say that they are. Oh, I'm so pro-black. I love black people. What I got a white girlfriend or a white boyfriend or something like that. No matter how pro-black they say they are, they really desire proximity to whiteness. This is why I don't be having a problem with like Republicans because I feel like we understand each other. I don't want to be around y'all and y'all don't want to be around me. Cool. Good. You go over there with your schools and your hospitals and your whatever and let me and mine have our own. You know what I'm saying? I'm not with that. Oh, I want to be the season and I want to pop in and be close to white people and us live in the same spaces and do the blah, 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 blah. No, no. I'm good on all that. My own personal vision of heaven is just black people everywhere. When I first went to Savior's Day, I went to Savior's Day for the first time in 2017, right? And once I got in the main hall where everybody was, I literally started crying. And for those of you guys who don't know what Savior's Day is, it's where all the nation of Islam, they come together and, you know, we hear the minister speak, right? I went into the hall and I saw all these beautiful black people, well-dressed, everybody greeting each other, uh, you know, giving everybody the greetings and calling each other brother and sister. And it was just a feeling of love in that place. And it was just a bunch of black people, beautiful, no problems, ain't nobody tripping, everybody looking good. And I just sat in the hall and watched everybody and cried because I'm like, this is what heaven looks like to me. You know? But so excuse me for not jumping on the Oh, we need to cancel yay bandwagon or cancel any black person that goes against white people. Uh, excuse me for not jumping on that bandwagon because I personally don't care for proximity to whiteness. Sorry, when I said I was pro-black, I meant it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Savior's Day be happening in Detroit or Chicago. You feel me? And it'd be happening in February and it's dope. It's beautiful. Even if you're not a part of the nation of Islam, it's just a beautiful thing to see. Honestly, it's a beautiful thing to see. It did. It broke me down. But regardless, you know, I know people going to be in the comments like, ah, I don't agree with that. I don't, again, I don't care what you don't agree with. <laughs> Honestly, I just, I'm, I really, I don't. I don't. And it doesn't matter if you, whether or not you think Kanye really cares about black people or whether or not he do. Oh, none of that matters. It's all about what, what we're able to think and say without other people telling us that it's unexpe unacceptable for us to think and say those things. We all would be against physical slavery, right? If white people came and was like, hey, we want to put black people in slavery. We'd be like, no, no, you're not going to enslave us again. But everyone seems to be on board with mental slavery. We're all okay with that. We're okay with the masses of the media and the news and all that telling us what's acceptable to think and say. We're okay with that kind of slavery. That's all I'm saying. You feel me? And that's all I got to say. And if you want to watch the live, I'm posted, but I'm done. Thank you for everybody that bought stickers or whatever that they call it, the badges or, you know, whatever. Thank you guys for that. I appreciate it. I just want to say what I have to say and get off of here because I got stuff to do. But I love you guys. I really do. I love us. I love our people, black people for real. This ain't no game. This ain't no, oh, well, I just get on social media and talk because blah, blah, blah. I really love our people on a real level. And that's all I have to say. Goodbye. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Love you.